All right, mates. Howdy doody. In today's video, we're doing the Blood Elf starting experience. Starting off in Sunstrider Isle, and then moving on to Eversong Woods. So let's get. For nearly 7,000 years, the High Elves cultivated a shining, magical kingdom, hidden deep within the forests of Northern Lordaeron. But five years ago, the undead Scourge invaded Quel'Thalas and drove the Elves to the brink of extinction. Led by the evil Death Knight Arthas, the Scourge destroyed the mystical Sunwell, thereby severing the Elves from the source of their arcane power. Though the scars of that conflict are evident, the remaining Elves have banded together and retaken much of their homeland. Calling themselves Blood Elves, these grim survivors are committed to regaining the vast powers they once commanded. Inspired by the leadership of their beloved prince, Kael'thas Sunstrider, the Blood Elves now seek new sources of arcane magic and the means of defending their land against the undying horrors of the Scourge. As one of the few surviving Blood Elves, you must master your thirst for magic and help shape the destiny of your people. I've covered Blood Elf lore in the Chronicle vids, but as a little recap, during Ashara's reign, there was an elite magic-using sect of elves known as the Highborn. They were pretty loyal to their queen, so when she asked them to open a bunch of portals for the Burning Legion, they were like, well that sounds like a great idea. After the War of the Ancients and the Sundering, the Night Elves weren't too pleased when they found out the Highborn was still using arcane magic willy-nilly, so they exiled them from the entire continent. The Highborn sailed to the Eastern Kingdoms and followed a bunch of ley lines north. They established the Kingdom Kel'Thalas and renamed themselves High Elves. They created the Sunwell using a stolen vial of Well of Eternity juice, and then everything was great for thousands of years. Unfortunately, during the Third War, Arthas and the Scourge marched on Kel'Thalas. Most of the High Elves died trying to defend their kingdom, and so afterwards, they changed their name again, this time to Blood Elves in honour of their fallen brethren, and everything has been pretty shit for them ever since. Anyway, our Blood Elf hero today is called Fukfirth. Fukfirth started his adventure on Sunstrider Isle. This small island, located just northwest of Eversong Woods, had been uninhabited since Arthas' march on the kingdom, mainly because everybody died. Our hero had decided to join the effort to reclaim the isle, and so he immediately approached a lady called Magistrix Erona and was like, how can I help? Listen closely, Fukfirth. Those green floating objects over there, they're called burning crystals. We use them to power the isle's experimentations. And those little weird mana worm things, well, they're supposed to be the guardians of those crystals. But they've been a bit mental since the Third War. So kill a bunch of them, and we'll be one step closer to securing our home. Fukfius went ahead and killed a bunch of mana worms. They didn't seem all that hostile, to be honest, but Fukfius didn't care, because he's a Fukfius. Congratulations, you've finished one task, but we've learned something a little bit troubling. Those burning crystals have had a much worse effect on the Isle's natural balance than we'd thought. Some of the nearby lynxes have succumbed to their influence and must be put down. Bring me some of their collars, and I might be able to help the rest of them. Once again, Fukfirth attacked a bunch of completely neutral beasties. After he'd killed the third one, he realised they were only cubs. He'd been killing babies, and he felt like a right jerk. But he carried on anyway, collected eight of their collars, and returned to Arona. Cheers, mate. The nearby area is now fully secure, but not for long. We're going to need to reassert control over the entire isle if we're to survive here in the long run which means you're going to be facing much bigger threats than babies and worms. Report to my assistant, Lanthan Perilon. He's standing right there. Lanthan Perilon was indeed standing right there. Fuck fierce, barely had to move at all. Magistrix Arona told me you'd be coming. Did she? Or did you just overhear our conversation? Yeah, all right. Chill out. You see that big floating building over there? That's the Falthrian Academy. It's been taken over by one of the wretched. Bunch of hobo blood elves that have given in to their magic addiction. You'll be in charge of the effort to recapture the academy, but first, I want you to do a bit of gardening. The plants are out of control, so kick their asses. A couple of other folks near the Sunspire had exclamation marks above their heads. Firstly, Fukfius spoke to well watcher Selenian. Do you like history? Because I f***ing love it. People always tell me to stop dwelling on the past so much, but they don't know what the hell they're talking about. Here's a bit of history for you. Dathramar Sunstrider was our first king. He led us here from Kalimdor back when those purple assholes exiled us. There's a shrine of him nearby. Go check it out. The next side quest available was from Arcanist Hellion. Us Blood Elves have a racial ability called Arcane Torrent. It's basically a way for us to release some of the arcane magic we absorb. Like a magic fart. It's better out than in. You know what you should do? 
Go and do a magic fart on one of the mana worms. It'll be well funny. A hero ran around the area. He tried farting on a mana worm, but was out of range, and then had to wait for like two minutes before he could fart on another one. And he killed a bunch of plants too in the garden. After that, he head over to the Shrine of Dathramar and gave the plaque a little read. It wasn't the most riveting thing he'd ever read. Basically just said, this is a shrine. Dathramar's great. But Fuckface felt a strong pulse of some strange power, and it was actually a little bit disturbing. He handed those quests in, and Wellwatcher Selenian had a follow-up. I've left my stuff randomly scattered around the aisle. Dunno why. If I give you this four-slot bag, will you go and get my scrying orb, scroll of scourge magic, and my journal? That'd be swell. Fuckface quickly ran around Sunstrider Isle and grabbed those things for an extra bag. After that, he spoke to Lanthan again. Garden looks great. Well done. Now it's time for us to recapture the Academy. Head over there. Kill pretty much everything. Arcane Wraiths. Tainted Arcane Wraiths. And that wretched guy, Philendron the Banished. Bring me his head. Fuckface head up the floaty platforms, killing Wraiths on the way. When he reached the top of the Academy, he faced Philendron and straight up murdered the twat, and then chopped his head off like a psycho. And Lanthan Perillon was weirdly pleased to receive Philendron's head. You're truly ready to be a contributing member of Blood Elf Society, buddy. And you're pretty much done here. Magistrix Arona wants you to head out to Eversong Woods and aid with the reclamation of Silvermoon City. But speak to Outrunner Alarion on your way there. She'll probably have a delivery for an innkeeper or something. Falconwing Square wasn't far, and there were a number of quests available. Magister Geronith approached first. Our forefathers built arcane patrollers to protect our city. Unfortunately, they're a bit broken and no longer recognize us as their masters. I don't really give a crap about the patrollers themselves, but the arcane cores within them still hold great power and value. So go smash a load of them and bring me six cores. Next, Fukfir spoke to Elden Sunbrand. Headed over to the old Silvermoon ruins, are you? A supply of unstable mana crystals from one of our arcane sanctums was raided by Wretched recently. And as you may guess from the fact that they're unstable, that's not the best thing that could have happened. Could you go and get them back before the Wretched accidentally blow us all to smithereens? Our hero also noticed a wanted poster for someone called Thalys the Hungerer. A wretched ringleader who was wanted for multiple crimes, including murder. Bloody swine! Fuckface decided he would collect that bounty, as long as it wasn't too hard. He head out to the ruins of Silvermoon and started killing some arcane patrollers. He also collected any unstable mana crystals he could find. And he found Thalys inside a building in the area and killed him too. And all was right in the world. Magister Doronith now wanted our hero to head to the North Sanctum in Eversong Woods and deliver an unmarked letter to Laykeeper Kaydanath. And Aelden Sunbrand wanted him to travel to the West Sanctum and kill a bunch of night elf intruders that had been spotted in the area. Fuckfeus decided to head to the North Sanctum first. Laykeeper Kaydanus was talking to some random dwarf bloke, which was definitely weird. Thanks for the letter, Fuckfeus. Apparently there's some kind of malfunction going on over at the West Sanctum. I've been a bit busy entertaining this envoy from Ironforge. Can you go and give them a hand? Arriving at the West Sanctum, someone called Laykeeper Valania noticed our hero and was like, Finally! Took Kaydanus long enough to send help. I warned those jerks not to increase the load on the West Sanctum. But did they listen? Did they bollocks? And now we've got arcane wraiths pouring out all over the place. We need them taken out before we can do the necessary repairs, so bloody hurry up. So Fuckfeus ran around the area, killing mana wraiths and mana stalkers, and some of those night elf intruders that Elden had mentioned. One of them dropped some incriminating documents with maps of buildings in Eversong Woods. There were notes written on these maps, but in some dumb language that our hero couldn't read. He decided he'd return these documents to Elden Sunbrand, so he informed Laykeeper Valania that the wraiths had been taken care of, and set off back to Falconwing Square. Why would the Night Elves have notes written in Dwarven? A oh, bloody mysterious. Whoever wrote this didn't cause the malfunction on the West Sanctum, but they were sent as a spy to observe the result of it. So we've got a spy who writes in Dwarven. Hmm. I saw a dwarf being rude to Laykeeper Kaydanus earlier. Well, mystery solved. Probably that guy. Okay. We'll have to be subtle about this. Find a way to kill him, but quietly. We can't let people find out we allowed a spy to get this close to us. That's way too embarrassing. So Fuckfeas head back to the North Sanctum and approach the dwarf. Prospector Anvil Ward was his name. And he was like, what's the matter? You never seen a dwarf before? Off with you. Uh, I need a moment of your time, sir. Oh, you must be the lad assigned to show me around the Eversong Woods. Yeah, that's definitely who I am. The first stop on this tour is uh, right inside this building here. Well, this doesn't seem ominous at all. Let's go. And no one ever saw Prospector Anvil Ward again. Back at Falcon Wing Square, Elden thanked our hero for that thing he did, wink wink, and then was like, you should probably head over to Fairbreeze Village next, Fuckfeath. Ranger de Golian was sent there to find out about some wretched attack on the shipyard. He sent word back asking for reinforcements. Just head south and you'll get there eventually. See ya. 
On the way to Fairbury's village, Fugfees stumbled across someone called Apprentice Raylan, standing by a cart looking a bit flustered. You there, help me. A fellow apprentice and I were ambushed by Wretched. They took everything they could get their hands on, the little scummy bastards. The other apprentice, Melador, he chased after them. And I stayed behind because I'm um, a coward. Please, go find Melador. Melador wasn't really that far away at all. As bloody wretched, they make speedy Gonzales look like regular Gonzales. But Sodom, I'm more concerned about my instructor's elemental grimoire. I'm pretty sure one of those wretched twats threw it in the river, but I can't find it. After a little bit of searching, our hero located the book, but it was absolutely soaked. Oh crap, Antiol's gonna lose his shit over this. Okay, here's the plan. You take the book back to my instructor and tell him you dropped it in a puddle like an idiot. He has no authority over you, so he can't do anything. Please do this. Please. I'll make it worth your while. Fuckface went and found Instructor Antheol and told him exactly what happened, including the fact that one of Antheol's students had even tried to bribe our hero into taking the blame for their incompetence. Fuckface did this because I think he might be a little bit of an asshole. Do me a favour. Go back and find my two dim-witted students. Give them a bit of discipline by using this wand on them. Trust me, you'll love it. Our hero went back and used the wand on the two apprentices, and Antheol was right. He did love it. Next, Fuckface went to Fairbury's village. He spoke to Ranger de Golian and advised him that he was here to help. Sunsail Anchorage has been overrun by Wretched. Go in there and show them that we're not to be trifled with. As Fuckface neared the shipyard, he came across a couple of other folks with quests available. Captain Kelisendra was up first. Some grimscale murlocs have stolen my cargo. I'm pretty sure they're living in some huts near the Anchorage, on the Golden Strand. Could you get my stuff back? The other bloke was Valendris Whitemorn. Bit embarrassing, but when the Wretched attacked the Anchorage, we just kind of ran away. Unfortunately, we left behind a load of weapons. Somebody should probably go and get those before the Wretched figure out how to use them. Also, whilst you're there, might as well kill their ringleader, Alderon. So our hero did all of those things. Killed some Wretched, killed their leader, grabbed the weapons, and even took a little trip down to the beach and grabbed the captain's stolen cargo. And then he head back and handed all the quests in for some XP. Although Ranger de Golian was now pretty much done with Fugfeath and advised him to head to Fast Rider Retreat next, our hero wasn't quite done in Fairbury's village just yet because there were several other quest chains he still needed to do. Another ranger, called Serene, was hanging about just outside the village. Fuckface walked up to her and she was like, Are you bored of the wretched? Good, because we've experienced an increase in scourge attacks coming from the east. If you head over to the Dead Scar and kill a bunch of the undead roaming around, that'll make defending this village a hell of a lot easier. Also, when you get a chance, you should go and speak to Rune Warden de Ryan, near the border of the Ghostlands. Another lady called Magistrix Landra Dawnstrider appeared, my apprentice, Mervida, embarked on a very dangerous mission to the Dead Scar, specifically the East Sanctum. I'm a little bit worried about her, so if you're headed to the Dead Scar, keep an eye out for her. And just before Fuckfeath left the village, some guy called Ardeen Riverwind ran up and was like, Hey, if you're headed down to the border of the Ghostlands, you should go to the Scorch Grove. Find my sister, Lariana. She'll probably have some work for you. Fuckfeath had a feeling, no matter which quest he decided to do first, he'd probably end up having to go backwards and forwards multiple times between the same places. So he head down towards the Rune Warden bloke first. We had a magical barrier that ran along the border of our kingdom called Bandanoriel. It was powered by ancient rune stones dotted about the forest. Unfortunately, we were betrayed by an insider called Darkhan Drathia, and the barrier came down, allowing Arthas to attack us. Cool story, bruh. Oh sorry, am I boring you? Look. There's only three of these rune stones left standing, and only one that still retains any power. Take this crystal, and infuse its energy into the eastern rune stone. It will take a minute, and you'll have to fight waves of Scourge, but don't worry about it. After completing that task, which felt like it lasted a hell of a lot longer than one minute, our hero found Lariana Riverwind, and she did indeed have some work for him. The blight that tainted our soil is spreading, and the Scourge themselves are trying to expand out of the region. We couldn't let that happen, so we burned down the forest, hence why it's called the Scorched Grove. As hard a decision as that was, what I'm about to ask you pains me greatly. The tree ants in the area are trying to foster the regrowth of the forest. We tried telling them to stop it, but they won't listen, so kill them. Fugfees killed a whole bunch of tree ants. He didn't feel bad about it at all. He even decided to just randomly kill the larger one, Old White Bark, even though Lariana didn't even ask him to do that. But when Old White Bark died, he dropped a pendant, and this pendant had the initials LR written on it. Probably Lariana Riverwind, innit? I gave this pendant to old Whitebark after he and his people helped us rebuild our village. Why do you have it? Wait, you didn't kill old Whitebark, did you? I didn't not kill old Whitebark. You really are a fuckface. Jesus. Well, that was awkward. Next, our hero head over to the Dead Scar and killed a bunch of Scourge Zambies for Ranger Serene and then found Apprentice Mervida. Hey, how's it going? 
I've been trying to figure out what it is about this tainted soil that attracts the undead so much. And the ley lines are completely disrupted by it as well. Can you get me some soil samples? I'd do it myself, but I'm scared. After he returned with soil samples, Apprentice Mavida cast an augmentation enchantment to analyse them, and then continued. Okay, you'll need to take these research notes back to Magistrix Landra Dawnstrider. See ya. He returned to Fairbury's village and handed in his quests. Magistrix Landra Dawnstrider wasn't overly pleased to hear her apprentice's conclusion. The damage to the land on the Dead Scar is irreversible. Oh, piss. Fuckface was now pretty much done in Fairbury's village, but before he could set off to Farstrider retreat, Landra gave him another quest. I swear, if Lord Saltheril sends me one more request for party supplies, I'm going to set fire to someone. Some of us are actually busy with, oh, I don't know, defending Kelthalas. Can you go over to Saltheril's haven and tell him to stop being such a twat? Before Fuckface even had a chance to call Lord Saltheril a twat, he was like, You there, we're going to have a party, but we need supplies. Go and get a bottle of Sun Touch Special Reserve, some spring pour appetizers, and a bunch of fireworks. This is going to be absolutely banging. Fuckface then head over to Fast Rider Retreat and spoke to Lieutenant Dawnrunner. You may have noticed that our kingdom isn't that large. There's talk of some of us moving to Outland, but in the meantime, we still need to defend what little land we do have. The Imani Trolls have become a real bloody nuisance recently. They've been raiding us almost daily, and it's annoying. So I want you to head over to their settlements, Zebwatha and Torwatha, and teach them a goddamn lesson. Arathel Sunforge piped up. As much as we hate the Imani, I can't help but appreciate some of their crafting work. If you happen to come across Spearcraft or Atembe in Torwatha, beat him up and steal his hammer. Cheers, mate. So Fuckface head to the Amani settlements and murdered a bunch of trolls. He also stole that Spearcrafter guy's hammer. Whilst in Torwatha, he came across a troll prisoner called Venjashi, who wanted our hero to kill the Amani chieftain, Zulmarosh. Us Dark Spears are mortal enemies of the Amani, just like you. Their boss, Zulmarosh, gave me the bad poison, and now I'm dying. But I can't die in peace, knowing that he's still walking around with a big dumb smile on his face. So go chop his head off. Zulmarosh was hanging around in Zebwatha. Fuckface fought his way through more Amani trolls and killed the jerk. The chieftain dropped some invasion plans, once again written in some dumb language Fuckface couldn't understand. But it was pretty clear from the markings on the maps that the Amani intended to attack both Fast Rider Retreat and Fairbury's village. So our hero head back to Lieutenant Dawnrunner to warn her. They've been pinning us here whilst planning an attack on Fairbury's village. Gotta be honest, that's actually pretty smart. I wasn't expecting that at all. You should head back to Fairbury's village and inform Ranger de Golian. Even with their chieftain dead, they should prepare for an attack. Tell him I'll send reinforcements as soon as possible. But before Fuckfeast did that, he spoke to another person at Fast Rider Retreat, called Magister Duskwither. I had a magical academy nearby called Duskwither Spire, and for reasons that I shall keep to myself, I had to shut it down. I sent one of my pupils there, Apprentice Laurel Thalith, to go and shut down the power, and she hasn't returned. So now I'm going to send you, rather than go check myself, because reasons. Fuckfeast head north to Duskwither Spire and found the apprentice. Hey, so I've been sent here to shut down the power to the academy. Unfortunately, it's been taken over by strange magical creatures, so I can't. Take this deactivating jewel and see if you can do it. Fuckface ran up through the spire and deactivated the three power sources. Whilst there, he came across a journal that belonged to Magister Duskwither. Long story short, the Magister had been experimenting to find a supplemental source of magical energy now that the Sunwell was gone. As our hero continued to read the journal, it became quite clear that as the Magister's desperation increased, he'd started to go a little bit mental, using his own students as test subjects. And when the experiments went wrong, he tried to run away. So our hero returned to Magister Duskwither, showed him the journal, the Magister cried a little bit, and then there was no real consequence to his actions, which was a bit weird. And that's it. Back at Fairbreeze Village, Landra Dawnstrider told our hero to head out to the Ghostlands next. Her nephew had gone missing, and she was a little bit worried. The Ghostlands were a haunted, plagued, nasty place, full of Scourge and trolls and other creatures. But also, it was the home to one of the Blood Elves' most vile traitors, Darkhan Drathea. Meanwhile, Elsewhere in Eversong Woods, Lord Saltheril was still waiting for his party supplies, and he'll be waiting forever, because he's a twat. And we're leaving it there! So that's the Burning Crusade starting zones done. Next time, I'll be doing the Death Knight starting experience, and then after that, it'll be Worgen and Goblins from Cataclysm. And I'm really looking forward to the Goblin one. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks. And all that's left to say is, thanks for watching, and see ya!